Hello there. In a wonderful turn of events. Now I've got two items of news from Scotland today, one of which will bring a smile to your face and the other will leave you fuming with anger. Now to the first story. We all know that four-year-olds are completely socially aware and know their own minds completely, don't we? After all, wasn't it Aristotle who said, give me the child until aged four and I will show you the they, them. So isn't it right that the Scottish educational establishment confronts them with deep, fundamental, life-determining questions? Questions that will set the course for their gender futures. Yes, primary schools in Scotland are setting up LGBT clubs and gender and sexual orientation alliance groups for their pupils. All as part of their membership of a scheme run by a charity, LGBT Youth Scotland. An organisation that received almost a million quid of public money over the 2022 to 2023 tax year. An organisation that requires schools to put up relevant posters and hand out gold badges. Sounds like the Scottish education system has rejected the report by paediatrician Dr Hilary Cass, doesn't it? Something that will definitely please certain, um, organisations across Scotland. So I'm sure that all Scottish parents will be happily dropping their youngsters off into the loving care of their primary schools going forwards, without a gender worry in their heads. After all, this policy comes from on high, from the Humza Yousaf SNP government, an entity that can do no wrong up in sunny Scotland. After all, they do appear to have completely put the Police Scotland Operation Branch Form investigation to bed, don't they? Yes, no one now remembers the missing mythical 600 grand of party funds, nor the luxury camper van that mysteriously just turned up from nowhere. All the ferries must now be running like a well-oiled machine, and educational standards must have been brought back to their previous excellent levels to allow them time for this latest project. And one assumes they've given every pupil their own promised laptop and bicycle. Oh, they haven't. Oh well, I'm sure it's all for the best. And I'm certain that they'll deliver on this important move to make sure that the establishment can get their hands on children's gender identity as soon as they walk into the schoolyard for the first time. But according to the latest news, Humza has suspended the use of puberty blockers in Scotland. A major U-turn. How does that dovetail in with this policy? Also, these young primary school Scots are so mature that they can then become gender champions for the other children. And as usual, the normal bigots are out there saying that children of that age are too suggestible, too easily indoctrinated, and that it will be harmful for those children. And that children should not be used as pawns in adult political battles. People like Sir John Hayes, chairman of the Tory Common Sense Group, educational psychologist Carolyn Brown, Miriam Cates, co-chairman of the New Conservatives Group, of MPs, and Jacob Rees-Mogg. These people are even arguing that these four-year-olds don't yet have the biological, psychological and emotional capacity to deal with these gender-based questions. How can they say that when the SNP government and educational system, with all their resources, say otherwise? I mean... And it's left me wondering if those nippers are so mature that they will be sent polling cards for the next Holyrood election too. Anyway, if you're a parent living in Scotland, I'm assuming this has put a big fat grin of pleasure across your face. And if it hasn't... Humza has a hate law in place as of the 1st of April, ready to deal with your bigotry. 
So the outcome of all of this, I assume, will be to create a more emotionally balanced generation going through to the workplace, who are much better educated and prepared for the world than previous generations, as well as being much less likely to be easily manipulated by extremely evil actors. Now to the second story. Another shock SNP U-turn. The second in a day. They'll be U-turning on independence before you know it. So what's the big news? The SNP government is shock horror, watering down its net zero commitments. Yes, this will put the whole green establishment up there into a massive tailspin. Has Humza lost his marbles, they will screech. And given recent judgments at the European Courts of Human Rights giving their judges power to enforce net zero rules, one assumes the Green Lobby will be hot-footing it to Strasbourg as we speak. It seems that the self-assumed godlike powers of the SNP are failing them. Have they not been able to master and overcome the laws of science in this matter? Surely, just by them writing the net zero laws in the first place will force net zero to come to pass. I mean, they've just written the hate laws and the gender laws, haven't they? And all will now be sweetness and light on the matter. Won't it? Now, according to Herald Scotland... Moira McCallan, the Cabinet Secretary whose brief includes net zero, is due to update MSPs later today on the government's response to a damning report which warned key climate pledges were no longer credible. Are we hearing that these ambitious net zero pledges to cut carbon emissions by 75% by 2030 are just unicorns and rainbows? Will Scotland now fry... As 2030 approaches, we must be told. The people of Scotland will be so angry to find out they'll either be flooded or flame-grilled after 2030, won't they? The campaign group Net Zero Watch, that highlights the serious implications of expensive and poorly considered climate change policies, has issued a statement saying... Net Zero Secretary Moira McCallan told the Holyrood Parliament that having set themselves a legally binding target of cutting carbon emissions by 75% by 2030, she and her officials were now considering a variety of options to address the impossibility of actually delivering, including legislation. But... Who is to blame for that failure at Holyrood? Well, according to Ms McCallan, it is very surprisingly the fault of... Yes, you've got it. Westminster and the constraints of devolution are to blame. But it wasn't Westminster that made the SNP pledges in full knowledge of the political landscape, was it? Net Zero Watch director Andrew Montford said, This is a purely political decision. Whatever course they take, the Scottish Government will face opposition from environmentalists, the Climate Change Committee and their Green Coalition partners. But they have no option. You can't negotiate with reality. However... As far as I can see, Scotland is still tied to its own full net zero by 2045 date. So this watering down today will have to be followed very soon with a massive acceleration. Unless the science keeps rearing its ugly head, of course. So tell us how you feel about these two stories. And don't forget to join us over on Locals too.